Good afternoon and welcome to the Brazil-Canada Mining Insights ESG Leadership uh, Session on Mining and Biodiversity. This is the seventh session of uh, the Brazil-Canada Virtual Mining Conference. This is our second conference and uh, we are bringing a series of important discussions on regulatory frameworks, capital markets, ESG, diversity and inclusion, exploration, smart mining and innovation, uh, financing in mining, um, among others, and, and it's taking place virtually until uh, May 31st. And this is in preparation for the 16 Brazil-Canada conference at PDAC uh, in 2022 that will happen in person in Toronto this time. After, after these two years uh, with, uh, with the pandemic, we'll be back presential in Toronto uh, between June 13th and June 15th. Uh, and we'll be very pleased to see you in person. So I'm, I'm Rafael Benke, CEO and founder at uh, Proactiva. Uh, I'm also the chair of the BCCC ESG committee, and, and I'll uh, help to host this event and also uh, uh, specifically our keynote and, uh, and uh, panel. So, uh we, we we hope this this content will be uh, of use uh, to you uh, i just wanted to highlight that the the platform you are in provides the opportunity to connect with your peers colleagues professionals from the mining sector from all over the world so uh, just be at ease to uh, uh, go uh, to the networking tab check out uh, who else is online today and interact. There is also a matchmaking tool available for you. So uh, we hope uh, meaningful connections can happen online. So let's make best uh, use out of it. So before uh, start, I just wanted to, to share a few reminders. Uh, first of all, the discussion today will be in English. We, we are offering, uh, however, uh, simultaneous transla translation for the whole program, and you can access the Portuguese channel by switching the language in, in the interpreter icon on the bottom right side of your Zoom screen, ok? So, now in Portuguese, estamos oferecendo tradução simultânea desse evento, e as apresentações de hoje vão ser em inglês, mas você pode acessar o canal em português através do ícone de tradução simultânea na parte de baixo de sua tela. Ok? So you, you'll be able also to ask questions to the panelists as the discussion will unfold. Please uh, use the Q&A box in the Zoom screen to send questions to our speakers. We'll do our best to answer the questions during the session. If there are any remainder questions, we can revert uh, later to you. Uh, so we have a, we have a, 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 an interesting agenda for you today with a, with a keynote speech by the Secretary of Geology, Mining and Mineral Transformation of the Brazilian Ministry of Mines and Energy, uh, Mr. Pedro Paulo Diaz Mesquita. And uh, following uh, the keynote, uh, we will have a panel focus on uh, the relationship between mining and biodiversity, and particularly uh, trying to focus on how to, uh, to assess and address uh, risk and impacts uh, uh, in this relationship. Um, so uh, in this panel, uh, I'll introduce them later, we'll have Rodrigo Lima as the moderator with Marcio Pereira, uh, BMA Law, uh, Laurie Kelly with Vale, Leandra Ruda, uh, with uh, Golder and uh, Marcio Henriquez with uh, BNDS. Um, so uh, again, thank you for your participation. And uh, I would like to, to bring some background to the discussions we have today. And uh, before that, I would like to ask already the panelists that are uh, uh, around uh, uh, the table and uh, on this panel, so feel free to open your cameras. So uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, Pedro Diaz Mesquita, uh, Rodrigo uh, Lima, um, uh, Marcio uh, Enriquez, Marcio Pereira, 
Laurie, Leandro. So very welcome to the panel. And uh, again, the, the, the BCCC uh, has been following the sustainability uh, theme for quite some years. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the occasion of uh, the PDAC, uh, the prospectors and developers uh, uh, meetings that happen every year in Canada. And we've been using the Brazil-Canada uh, meetings uh, as an opportunity for us to discuss the sustainability dimension uh, of mining. Uh, and uh, through the years, we've addressed different aspects uh, in these sessions uh, in Toronto, uh, tackling risk management, crisis management, uh, human rights, uh, uh, sustainability strategy. Uh, and throughout this work, we have had a very positive feedback from the mining community on both sides, in both countries, uh, highlighting the relevance of this topic and how essential it is uh, for the existence, uh, survival, uh, and the future of, uh, of the mining uh, industry. And also uh, the interrelation of the mining industry with uh, the future uh, our own future, and we'll discuss this a little bit uh, in short. Uh, but very importantly, because of this relevance in the BCCC, we have established a committee dedicated to sustainability and to ESG. Uh, and in this committee, we've been uh, uh, developing uh, the work uh, of uh, internal events, external events, such as this one, where we have the opportunity uh, to, to discuss the status quo, uh, trends, present, future uh, of uh, uh, sustainability and ESG matters in general. And in the case of this event, uh, the relationship between uh, mining and, and uh, sustainability. So, um, with with uh, with this background on uh, of what uh, the 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 Brazil Canada Chamber has been doing, I think it is important to to notice the the great uh, the great importance that ESG uh, matters, particularly in the last three to four years, uh, have. Uh, have uh, uh, increased. Uh, and if we go back maybe 10 years, uh, 15 years, of course, sustainability was present and had been present for a long time. But uh, really what we see today is uh, a tipping point of the relevance and the strategic aspect of ESG uh, for the ability to do business, right? Uh, so we see today a direct link uh, of ESG parameters that have been developed for decades as uh, a, a precondition uh, uh, for companies to get insurance, to get credit and funding, uh, to get equity participation, and of course, uh, uh, the collateral of it and the company's reputation. But a very interesting component of it is that the ESG world is bringing to the mining uh, sector uh, a tangibility of what we use to call beyond license. So uh, the, 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 what we used to have in the past as the checkbox of uh, compliance uh, today is no longer sufficient. We are seeing that the beyond compliance uh, matter today referenced by international frameworks is front and center in this agenda. Now, uh, uh, this is a, a, an interesting 
uh, aspect for us in a sector that has been, as we said, uh, dealing with, uh, with sustainability for its own existence. And at uh, uh, a crossroads, a global crossroads, where we see uh, regions, countries, several jurisdictions in the world uh, really concerned about 10 years from now, about 30 years from now. What will we be in 2050 in, uh, in, in, uh, in the long run? Uh, now, on one hand, we have the stereotype and also real facts of having mining as a highly impacting sector, right? On the other hand, we see the fundamental role of mining in the energy transition, in the global transition towards the new economy. Mining is part of a, a, a necessary uh, part of the solution for this new economy, uh, be it in the more obvious aspects of uh, batteries, solar panels, electric vehicles, or any other sustainable solution that is sought. Uh, minerals, metals will be necessary. Uh, rare earth, uh, lithium, uh, cobalt, uh, nickel, and, and so many other elements that are necessary for this uh, transition. Uh, for a lower carbon economy, for an, eco uh, 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 an economy of uh, where we value life cycles uh, and circular economy. So the big question behind that is uh, if we should see mining as the necessary evil in this transition, or if we can see mining as an effective strategic sustainable partner for this green economy, for this new economy. So this is a very fundamental question uh, that ESG performance, that sustainability ambitions, uh, and the work of governments, of companies, of civil societies, and all actors around uh, the natural resources uh, sector will need to answer. And definitely with the players we'll have in the panel uh, today speaking about uh, mining and biodiversity, for instance, we, are, we will see how much we developed and progress from the understanding of what is uh, the role of, uh, of the private sector in the context of biodiversity or any other element related to sustainability and where we can get in the future uh, uh, much more seeing the sector as an effective solution and maybe a builder of legacy, positive legacy to this context rather than the necessary evil. And I think this is the central challenge for us. So having said that, uh, uh, I would like, uh, uh, and it's with a great honor that uh, our, our ESG uh, committee uh, welcomes our Secretary of Geology, Mining and Mineral Transformation, uh, Mr. Pedro Paulo Diaz Mesquita, who has uh, been with the ministry now for, I be believe, a little over uh, two years, uh, right, uh, Secretary? And uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Diaz Mesquita, before his current role, he was already with the sector of intelligence management uh, in the Department of Mining and Metals uh, in the National uh, Bank for Economic and Social Development. So already very uh, integrated at a, at a very strategic level in the mining uh, sector uh, in a, an institution that is very connected to the sustainable agenda, pioneer in the sustainable agenda in Brazil. So I believe uh, not only because of his current position, but uh, because of his professional uh, uh, path, he will have a, a very interesting uh, aspect uh, and perspective uh, uh, to, to bring uh, to us. 
Uh, and uh, besides that, I would like to highlight that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mesquita is uh, an economist uh, with an MBA uh, and, uh, and has also a master's in public policies, strategies and development, which, which really brings him a mix uh, uh, of education uh, 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 integrating public, private uh, 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 dimensions that uh, will enrich this, this, this keynote to us. So with, with that, uh, Mr. Secretary, let me uh, hand over to you for your keynote. Uh, and uh, in just after the keynote, we will start our panel. Mr. Secretary, the floor is yours. Hello. Thank you, Rafael, for the introduction, generals and words. Uh, thank you all for having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be again <clears throat> participating of uh, the CCC event uh, and addressing a topic that is one of the most relevant for the future of mining, uh, as I, I used to say. So I have some few slides to guide my, my, my speech. I'll, I'll share them with you now. Okay, so... Yeah, yes. 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 it's fine. Yes. So, so let's go. Uh, Rafael, I, I'm more positioned and uh, uh, I couldn't be... Uh, uh, it couldn't be different. I'm more positioned on the whole of uh, sustainable mining as a sustainable effective partner for sustainable development and also biodiversity, as you may note uh, in this first slide. So uh, first of all, I'd like to, to highlight two of the main uh, subjects addressed by our national mining plan for 2050. Uh, we are now building this long-term plan and uh, I highlight here uh, sustainable development as one of the main subjects that will be addressed by this plan. And also, as you, you mentioned, Rafael, the value chains of minerals for clean energy transitions, transition and uh, recognizing the whole of the mining industry to climate change. So, uh, the National Mining Plan will be put in public consultation in June of this year, and then we'll have the launch of the plan in November of uh, this year. So just uh, uh, a few uh, uh, words about what we'll address uh, related to the minerals for clean energy transition. Uh, we are looking for the renewables, electromobility, um, and what minerals uh, will have to grow demand strongly so as to address these needs. And uh, we started these studies for the plan uh, based on this um, 11 minerals that are listed here that are the ones we start to focus uh, to develop uh, value chain uh, in Brazil in a view that uh, the world will be uh, more uh, efficiently supplied by these minerals uh, if we get to uh, lead a path for less concentrated markets, less concentrated suppliers for these minerals. So we we insist, and uh, I used to say that uh, this is uh, a challenge for, for the world now because we have a lot of concentrated markets, mainly in lithium, uh, hair earth, also silicon, and uh, we have to unconcentrate this, developing new source. So it will be addressed to our plan. And now getting into our main topic here, uh, we, I'd like to, to point that we made uh, during the construction of the plan, we are making a lot of seminars to gather uh, uh, co uh, contribution from society and from specialists 
specialists. And uh, we had this uh, collaborative construction methodology we brought together to a seminar specifically addressing sustainability challenge uh, for 40 experts, including public sector agents. And uh, uh, the major topics of discussion was environmental licensing, uh, how to support and strengthen uh, the dialogue between the companies and uh, the institutions related to environmental licensing in Brazil, uh, management of mining waste and mining liabilities, territorial planning and relationship with local communities, uh, including uh, the municipalities and governments. Uh, we are dealing with a uh, Brazilian uh, National Association of Mining to develop, a, 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 as I can, I can name it, uh, it's an hour for the municipalities that uh, show uh, the, the better results in terms of uh, sustainable goals and also social uh, and governance uh, uh, metrics. So it's something we expect to launch in June, already uh, uh, sharing with the market uh, the the hours of this of this the municipalities that will be contemplated in this first edition of the hour. So uh, we also focus on technologies uh, in strategic minerals, uh, sustainable processes, and. Uh, a more broader view of ESG and mining activities. So it was a, a, a very good time for discussing these topics that I'll show uh, here in my presentation uh, related to sustainability uh, and the challenges we have. Uh, we separated some proposed actions and uh, these four ones uh, that we'll be discussing in how to address in our plan. So uh, to use and partner with uh, uh, consultants and, and market agents so as to build uh, or, uh, inf or, or bring more light to the already existing ESG best practice guides, uh, including metrics and goals for the mining industry uh, to disclose ESG practices and the uh, company's adherence and based on ESG ratings. Uh, it's something that uh, they're occurring in our discussion. Uh, encourage and require mining companies to observe these practices and also the creation of a kind of ESG seal for mining companies. This is uh, what uh, I could say it's the, 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 the main uh, propositions that uh, appeared in our discussion. Uh, in, on this seminar. Um, now, uh, I'd like to show how uh, uh, we view sustainable mining now in Brazil. So I, I used to say that sustainable mining, it's about balancing the needs of communities, safety and environmental protection. So you have to address all these issues and uh, I like to, to point some aspects here that are not uh, usually, usually uh, highlighted because we face a lot of discussion, uh, more targeting environmental issues and the kind of uh, uh, not giving the same attention for the social needs that we know they are very, very important, uh, mainly in, in, in less developed countries or developing countries. So, uh, relating to, to sustainable mining in Brazil, uh, the first box here uh, is directed for tennis management. So we had a real improvement uh, uh, of rules for inspection and safety of dams. Uh, shut down of upstream tennis dams, Brazil decided to do that so as to prevent and avoid completely uh, new act, new act accidents of big proportion uh, or big impact, sorry. Uh, we have launched the public information system of our national mining agency uh, relating to, to, the, to the informations about the tailing dams in Brazil. And uh, more recently, we launched the 
new resolution of our national main mining agency uh, to incentive the tailings reprocessing, uh, targeting uh, a more uh, sustainable tailings management also. So in terms of uh, 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 environmental protection, uh, more related to, uh, I would add also the whole of the mining industry to forest protection and also recovery. Uh, just an example, uh, we have projects in the and uh, investments in Amazon forest that cover more than 500,000 hectares of uh, protection of Amazon forests. Uh, we have a lot of projects related to CO2 emissions reduction. Uh, we may see or read the use of conveyor belts, electric trucks, biomass, and uh, our ministry also uh, invests and supports studies for urban mining of electronic waste uh, in a circle economy uh, uh, view. So about social investment, we also uh, see a lot of things and, and actions done to support education and healthcare, training, income generation, um, traditional and indigenous people support to this, and also sustainable development of marginal regions uh, that are still blocked from the benefits of mining here in our country. This is a challenge that we as the government face and are working on. So the last uh, I'd like to highlight also the royalties uh, of the mining sector here in Brazil uh, that are distributed to municipalities. Uh, and in 2021, we had $1.5 billion distributed directly to the municipalities here in Brazil. And I, I like to point this as a whole and as a, a, a uh, an aspect of sustainable mining also, this impact that it has uh, on the, the budget of these municipalities, most of them uh, very uh, small municipalities. So here, uh, just to, to, to try to bring the discussion and inspire our, our panelists, uh, I brought some examples of uh, ESG and biodiversity practices uh, here in Brazil. So these are examples of the companies that work here. We try to gather uh, the examples for of the 10, 10 biggest companies that work here in Brazil. So we may watch a lot of uh, examples related to biodiversity and showing that the companies uh, that we target are very interested on this subject and uh, the conservation of biodiversity and recognize this as something very important to their future. So uh, while we, we were gathering this information, what was uh, notably uh, uh, for us, notably seen for us, it was also the the difference and uh, a kind of uh, gap that still are in some companies to develop initiatives like this one that I brought here. So uh, there, there is a red, there is still a lot of space to work on this and try to bring new companies to this kind of uh, of commitments. So uh, I like to to highlight some uh, few examples. So I, I am talking about environmental education program. Uh, it's very important to drive this in a lot of communities so as to avoid even uh, illegal extraction in some areas. That's a challenge that we face here in Brazil also. And uh, all the projects that are here uh, related to generating income to local communities uh, in a sustainable way. So this, so as to these communities, uh, rich uh, uh, way of life 
and uh, a way of income uh, that uh, is friendly with the environment. So this is just some examples. Uh, you have the material. And uh, I like to, I also like to share this. And we have Laurie here, she'll recognize, of course, Rafael can also recognize this, uh, is the whole of, uh, of uh, the mining activity in Karajas province, protecting a very big area of forest there. And uh, this is possible because of the characteristics of mining that generates a very high income uh, using a small portion portion of land. So this is something we have to to develop to, to disclose and uh, communicate better to society. And uh, so here uh, is Karajas National Forest uh, preserved by the mining activity. And I'd I, I also highlight uh, the Parque Nacional Campos Ferruginosos. That's a national uh, uh, forest uh, that protects more than 8,000 of hectares and 377 caves in its area. I, I, I like to also invite you, uh, you all to our seminar that will be held in May 26. Uh, so this month uh, that is focused on the sustainable development goals in Brazilian mine in 2022, recognizing that uh, the, on, the, the sustainable development goals agenda address this uh, social needs combined with environmental protection. That's why we like to use them to guide our efforts uh, with the companies of the mining sector. So in this event, we will present 12 success stories uh, to the market related to sustainable development goals in this effort to communicate better what mining is already doing uh, uh, in this subject. And at last, uh, I have some closing remarks that I, I, I hope will uh, uh, improve our discussion here. So climate change and clean energy transition depends on the growth of mineral production. Uh, environmental protect, protection is affected by social pressures. We see this a lot. Uh, monitor and fight environmentally harmful behavior demands investments. So uh, if we don't have the capability of position institutions in the place where are more pressure, we will have difficulties to, to to, to monitor and fight against it. And biodiversity, conservation and recovery too. So we'll face the same challenge. So sustainable mining is a fundamental pillar for sustainable development. And Brazil is a key player to meet world's mineral needs. Uh, thank you. And I hope we'll have a, a very good discussion here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. This, this was a, a very, very uh, interesting, insightful, useful presentation uh, for us. Uh, I, I believe it's a really strategic background for what we'll be discussing. Uh, some of the aspects you, you highlighted of the PNM 2050 I think are really inspiring in terms of what uh, uh, the mining community in Brazil uh, needs to look at. Uh, no doubt, uh, looking at, uh, at guidelines uh, uh, for ESG as best practices, as you said, uh, uh, how we disclose these, these ESG practices, how we encourage these discussions now as, as, as the outputs of, of your, uh, of your uh, dialogue under PNM uh, 2050, 
uh, uh, I, I think uh, one of the, the, the key aspects that you bring from your presentation is uh, really the, the, the very uh, impressive uh, positive impacts that the mining sector can bring uh, to environment and to society in general. Uh, and this goes way beyond uh, the tax aspect, which is, of course, uh, an important aspect. Uh, but uh, clearly, the examples you, you give around uh, forest uh, protection, conservation, uh, and uh, uh, social investment have been present historically uh, in the mining sector uh, in Brazil. And uh, uh, we, we should say that ESG aspects, SDG ambitions, as you are going to have the dialogue uh, now in the month of May, are just putting a clearer framework uh, to guide these practices so that they are not best practices, but standard fundamental practices of the sector uh, uh, in a way that we can answer a key question uh, uh, in the mining sector. What is the role of the mining sector uh, in Brazil's sustainable development in the case uh, that we are speaking about? So speaking Brazil, what is the role of the mining sector in sustainable development? And I think, uh, Mr. Secretary, you bring very clearly the potential, the transformational potential, the positive impact potential that the mining uh, sector has. And uh, when we talk about forest protection, conservation, the small footprint of mining, and mining as a lever uh, to uh, to conservation, or yet to uh, social investment in remote areas, we are talking about shared value. And the shared value in sustainability is the frontier, is the excellence, is how economic activities can really bring a shared value to all related stakeholders. And I remember uh, having a conversation about a decade ago on an airplane uh, with Eduardo Lecham, and maybe many here remember Eduardo Lecham, who is now the CEO of BAMI. And uh, at that point, uh, Eduardo was the, the global head of exploration for Vale, right? And I asked uh, Eduardo, uh, in what countries have you been to? Have you, have you been counting? And what countries have you been to? And his answer to me was, uh, uh, Rafael, if you see uh, a world map by night, everything that is dark, uh, I've been to. So this is the reality of mining. So uh, mining is very present in very remote areas because what, what determines the presence of, mine, uh, of mining is geology. It's not uh, necessarily uh, how easy it is logistics or the proximity to markets, it is geology. Uh, and, and that gives the challenge, but also the opportunity uh, for mining to make a difference and to uh, be an agent of, uh, of uh, shared value. So uh, uh, these, these points you brought and the examples, the power examples you brought, uh, Mr. Secretary, are, are very, very relevant. And this kind of impact is what not only ESG is looking at, but sustainable capital is looking for. So if you take the year of uh, 2019, sustainable investing was around $300 billion in the world. Uh, two years after, okay, two years after 2021, this raised from a little over 300 billion to over $1 trillion of sustainable investing, looking at positive impact. Positive impact meaning green impact, social impact, sustainability and sustainability linked impact or transition to a lower carbon economy. And a big player in this context, of course, 
traditionally Europe has been the, the larger issuer investor uh, in sustainable investment, but Latin America has been increasing and still has a huge potential for developing that. So that means that we can see at good practices under ESG, we can put our ambitions related to SDGs uh, and have uh, uh, partner capital looking at uh, sustainable investing with positive impact. So this is uh, when we go back to the question, what is the role of the mining sector in Brazil's sustainable development? We really need to step up and think strategically how we become a fundamental player uh, as the provider of, uh, of solutions for the new economy, but also a provider that is an agent, a positive agent uh, in the impact of sustainable development. So with that, my, my, my sincere thanks on behalf of uh, the Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce for, for, for the presence of our secretary. Mr. Secretary, uh, now a, a, a few words about the, the next panel that I'm going to, to introduce. And uh, we are going to discuss about uh, biodiversity. So we know that uh, human life, uh, the life on the planet depend on nature capital. Uh, nature capital, the services offered by nature, right? And biodiversity loss uh, can really result in critical reductions in the resources provided uh, uh, by the, the Earth's ecosystems. Uh, these ecosystems contribute to economic prosperity, to human development, to our ability to develop uh, our daily life or economic activities. So this interconnection between nature, nature capital, biodiversity, is fundamental for our existence and the existence of business. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is especially relevant in developing countries. And we're talking here about, uh, uh, about uh, Brazil also in this session, uh, because this is uh, a, a developing countries is where a lot of the natural resource uh, is based. And also we're talking about, uh, about uh, remote areas, challenging areas. This is where also will be uh, developing mining activities. So how do we uh, treat this uh, interrelation between mining and biodiversity? Is it as the necessary evil, as we were saying earlier, or as a partner of, of uh, sustainable development in the context of uh, biodiversity? And when we talk about uh, biodiversity, a key uh, question, is really to move uh, beyond the discussion of uh, how much we are impacting biodiversity and how much we mitigate uh, biodiversity, which is of course fundamental, but how do we move towards a no net loss of biodiversity? Or beyond that, how do mining activities can reach a net gain through its activities? So, uh, we just had the keynote from, from Mr. Secretary explaining conservation areas that maybe if mining weren't present in that specific location, we wouldn't have that biodiversity protected. So we have a net gain from the presence of the mining activities in, in that area. And this is a very special year for biodiversity. We will learn that from Rodrigo Lima, who is one of uh, Brazil's, I would say, Brazil's uh, main experts in, 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 in biodiversity has been following biodiversity for, for a long time and has been contributed immensely for, for this debate. But, but specifically for mining, before I hand over to, to Rodrigo and, and the panel he'll be moderating, uh, biodiversity is very present in any reference uh, of sustainability today from the sustainable development goals that, uh, that uh, Mr. Secretary is provoking us in, in this panel in May, uh, where specifically the sustainable development goal 15 is addressing the life on land objective, where an ambition is set related to uh, how we should protect, 
restore and promote the ecosystems on Earth. So this is a very fundamental uh, sustainable development goals that all nations in the world and the private sector through Global Compact has been endorsing and seeking through its activities. Uh, but uh, beyond ambi uh, ambitions, when we talk about performance, one of the most basic performance standards that we have worldwide endorsed by the Equator principles, by the principles of responsible investment, uh, by the ICMM and for us have, uh, uh, yeah, several frameworks is the IFC performance standard. And there is a specific performance standards under the IFC guidelines, uh, which is directed uh, towards biodiversity conservation and the sustainable management of living natural resources, which is specifically for mining endorsed by the ICMM's mining principles. So the principle seven uh, that uh, brings uh, the, the referencing of, uh, of uh, how we should avoid impact, minimize and, and restore impact and also offset uh, residual impact as a, as, a, as a principle. And as we are in the Brazil uh, Canada Chamber and uh, speaking of uh, ESG parameters provoked by, by, by Mr. Secretary, the toward sustainable mining uh, protocols of the Mining Association of Canada also bring uh, its biodiversity conservation management, management protocol. So this is all on the table. This is all already an existing reference uh, to the business community at large and specifically for uh, the mining sector. So uh, we have the references we have the inspiration, we have the ambition, and the question is how we move from a negative in, impact towards a no net, net loss, towards a net gain. So with that, we'll leave to the experts to, to discuss the matter. Rodrigo, uh, uh, CEO of Agroecony, will be moderating the panel with uh, Laurie Kelly, Head of Environmental Affairs at Valley Based Metals, Leandra Huda, Business Development Leader at Golder, uh, Marcio Henriquez, Market Intelligence Manager at uh, BNDS, uh, and Marcio Pereira, Partner at BMA Law, uh, Law Firm. So, Rodrigo, over to you. Thank you very much again, Mr. Secretary, the Chamber, and uh, I'll be back at the end of the panel. Thanks, Rafael. It's a pleasure to be here at the BCCC debate about mining, biodiversity, how to integrate and, and achieve win-win uh, uh, solutions towards promoting uh, uh, biodiversity conservation and remediation when it's needed and achieve the sustainable development goals, especially when it comes to biodiversity. And when we talk about biodiversity, we need to consider and have a, a very peculiar view about the social side connected to biodiversity. Uh, for example, when, it, when we consider the need to engage and to discuss and to uh, consider indigenous peoples, local communities and other uh, populations that may be impacted or may be connected uh, in mining projects. So uh, with this, uh, initial thought. I, I, I would like to to thank the invitation to be here and to to moderate this panel. And and before uh, handing over the, the 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 floor to to the panelists, I would take the opportunity to say a few words about what's happening uh, right now at the Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, the CBD is negotiating the Global Biodiversity Framework that will comprise 22 targets of biodiversity for 2050, the, the 2050 vision living in harmony with nature. And I think everyone can very easily agree that all of we and everyone in the world wants to live in harmony with nature. The, the tricky question is what means this? What is this? Because from one side, we can for sure uh, uh, find those that who argue that 
mining uh, we don't need, we don't accept because this there's no way to do mining uh, uh, on on a on a positive manner. Uh, this is maybe one 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 uh, point of view, but I think we all agree, including those that that uh, tends to to come with this kind of argument that we need mining in our daily lives for several different reasons. And, and, and the CBD with the Global Biodiversity Framework has one very specific challenge that is, uh, what is sustainable use of biodiversity? Because the CBD up to now uh, really promoted and, 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 and worked a lot at its first goal that is to conserve biodiversity and, uh, and avoid impacts to biodiversity and so on. Conservation is there, it's extremely important, how I just mentioned and, and the secretary presentation presented how uh, a specific case of, 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 of mining in Brazil helps to conserve native vegetation, broad areas, vast areas that may, may, may be, as Rafael just mentioned, would not be there if the project was not uh, there. Uh, so conservation is extremely important. But now the CBD, uh, it's at a moment. Now we have the uh, IPBS, that is the, 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 the scientific panel trying to address and assess and come with, with evidences uh, around biodiversity. And, and, and the, the whole idea of, of this moment of the CBD is to put biodiversity uh, at the same level of engagement and, and importance uh, as climate change. And, and when it comes to this point, we need to discuss as parties of the convention, as countries that are parties at private sector that are uh, uh, intrinsically engaged because they are using natural resources, what is sustainable use? Because otherwise we simply uh, check, say, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, and, and, and this is not sustainable development at the end because we need to have a, a, a holistic view about the SDGs and how they are integrated and so on. So in this regard, and, and there's also the, 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 the third pillar of the convention, that is the, the access to genetic resources uh, uh, and, and benefit sharing and traditional knowledge as well. So uh, if we get to the point to the, to, to the what is sustainable use and, and taking advantage of the decision that the CBD already approved in, in, in the last COP in 2018, uh, mainstreaming biodiversity in the energy and mining infrastructure, manufacturing and processing sectors. Uh, the, the, the mainstreaming agenda at the CBD is it's the, the locus on how to engage different stakeholders of the private sector towards promoting the goals of the convention and, and, and futurely the, the global biodiversity framework. So, and in my view, if, if there's not a, a balanced manner and, and proactively manner uh, aiming to engage the different stakeholders, the different sectors to monitor, to address risks, to mitigate risks, to compensate risks, to, 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 to follow rules, of course, because there are several rules to, to, to follow when it comes to, to mining. And we will have a presentation uh, from Mr. Marshall regarding the regulatory perspectives and, and uh, the financial sector as well, because the financial sector and, and the insurance sector must be uh, uh, totally uh, uh, connected to what is the, the criteria, what are, what are the criteria actually, sorry, uh, that must be addressed to be able to, to do an investment and to ensure a specific project and so on. And, and, and the, the, the biggest challenge at the CBD at this moment is that we, 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 we have views from parties that are uh, uh, more at the conservation side of the convention and that, that 
that they, they agree that we need to, to, to have uh, sustainable use targets, but how and, and what is sustainable use? And there is no one single definition of sustainable use. We can agree on principles, core principles about what is sustainable mining. And, and, and this is very clear at the sector, right? So, uh, but, but, but then when it, when, when it comes to uh, integrating with the social communities, uh, indigenous people and, and, and particular cases in, in different parts of the world, uh, uh, it, it becomes harder. So uh, the, the challenge uh, ultimately at the CBD will be to, if, if the targets, the, the global biodiversity frameworks uh, are successful in terms of integrating the private sector as a, a, a driver to promote the targets, to promote and implement the targets and monitor the targets, I think the CBD will be uh, extremely successful. If the approach uh, at the Global Biodiversity Framework uh, end up with something that, that are ex exclusive, uh, uh, that not, not as exclusive, that excludes some sectors and puts a lot of weight to the countries as conservation strategies, I think the, the, the Global Biodiversity Framework will fail. One of, the, one of the targets, for example, that are on the table is restoration. Restoration for every party of the CBD. Native vegetation restoration. So, okay, uh, uh, mining has a role to play when it comes to this. Yes, there is. As well as conservation of native vegetation, as well as the adoption of several measures to mitigate and to address possible impacts and what it comes uh, with, with a set of measures that, that can be uh, uh, raised and, and implemented, aiming really to address damages, uh, not to mention the social aspects of it and so on. Uh, and then to be able to produce, because we need to do uh, energy transition and so on, as, as was mentioned. And so we need mining. Everyone needs, as we need food production, as we need energy production, as we need uh, the, the, the huge challenge is how, is how to find a, a, a lever at the, the global biodiversity framework to really allow parties and private sector to really engage into this biodiversity conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity, considering mining, yes, because we need mining. Uh, it may be very tricky for, for some, but uh, this is a challenge, and, and, and in Brazil, I tend to believe that uh, considering the importance of the sector in Brazil and, 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 and other countries like Canada, and, and everyone has a role to play when it comes to what is sustainable mining and what, I, uh, uh, what a specific company can do towards promoting uh, uh, this culture of uh, responsible production uh, when it comes to a specific topic of the sustainable development agenda that is biodiversity. So this is a huge challenge. Uh, and I think we have, uh, we will have a, a meeting in Nairobi in June. Uh, there was not at the schedule, but we need more time to discuss several issues at the negotiation and then to get to Kunming, uh, hopefully uh, in September or, or October this year is not already confirm, but pro probably September or October, if COVID allows us to, to finally have the call. So uh, with, with that in mind, I, I would like to, uh, to invite our first panelists. Uh, uh, Rafael, just please uh, help, help me out with the order here. I think it's Laurie, right? Yes, La I think we, yeah, we can start with Laurie, yeah. Okay, Laurie. So please, Laurie, uh, uh, we, we will have some, uh, we have 15 minutes, but uh, sorry, uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, I, I would like to, to divide the, the, the presentations in two moments. Uh, so the first moment, we, uh, I would ask you to bring your, your view about 
the, the, the subject we are discussing. And that at the second moment, uh, we will come uh, for a discussion about the challenges, the future, how do you see this happening uh, from your, your company's or, or organization perspective? Please, okay. Laurie. Thank you, Rodrigo. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Um, my internet connection is a little bit unstable, so I apologize if my sound cuts out. Uh, as I'm presenting, I have a few slides to go over with you to present what um, Ballet Based Metals um, has learned and the strategy that we're undertaking with regards to biodiversity. As I'm presenting that, I'll turn off my camera to try and make the inter con internet connection more stable. So bear with me for a moment as I share, start to share my screen. All right, so again, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you uh, this afternoon, this evening. I'm at our refinery, our nickel refinery in Clitic, Wales, in the United Kingdom at the moment. So it's a little later for me here, but I've been spending some good time on site learning about some of our ESG successes and challenges. But what I wanted to share with you, building on some of the comments that um, Mr. Secretary shared with us about the activities that our organization, Valet, is undertaking in the Amazon in particular in Brazil. Um, this is just a snapshot of some of the biodiversity successes that we've had here. So protecting um, thousands, um, hundreds of thousands of hectares in high biodiversity areas, 80% of which is in the Amazon. As was mentioned, were we not mining in the area and undertaking protective measures, it is a certainty that um, much of that area would be um, deforested and we would lose the biodiversity value that we have in the region. Um, so we are protecting areas that go well beyond our fence line and our operational boundaries, which I think is key to the overall objective of having a net positive impact as we were talking about earlier. So not only do we have no net loss in, in um, uh, the regions in which we operate, ideally, but uh, in this particular case, we see net positive impact, which results then in the protection of more than 500 endangered and endemic species. So a really good success story. I just wanted to start off with that before going into a little bit of information on what our biodiversity strategy looks like. Um, so this is a bit of a busy slide with a lot of information on it, but what I really wanted to focus in on was the overarching objective of our strategy, which is in the top um, quadrant of the triangle here, and that's no net loss, or even better, like we were saying earlier, net positive impact, resulting from the activities we undertake, the best practices that we implement uh, very importantly the partnerships and alliances that we foster and the investments that we make. These are very conscious decisions that we make to spend the money, to invest in the land and to take the decisions that really help to protect biodiversity of the regions in which we operate. And this is all with the goal of leaving an area as good as or better than when we found it. Um, there are a number of ways that we can achieve that, but it really depends on our understanding of what it looked like before we got there. Um, so what kind of vegetation was in the area, what sorts of animals, fish, the overall ecosystem. And when we undertake a project, we do so in a way that um, minimizes disruption to the ecosystem. So you see on the left hand side of the slide here, impact mitigation hierarchy. And what that really is about is being very deliberate in the steps and the plans that we have with regards to biodiversity protection. So with the hierarchy, what we mean by that is we um, prioritize the activities that we undertake. And the first priority is to minimize disruption to the ecosystem. So not to take, undertake any disruptive activity whatsoever. That is very difficult in mining. So the next step in the hierarchy, if we were not able to achieve no impact, then we mitigate or rehabilitate any areas or species that are impacted by our activities. And then at the bottom of the hierarchy, kind of the least preferable option is to offset 
any residual impacts. So that could be investing in land outside of our boundaries where we can ensure that we're able to um, protect biodiversity in that area. Um, how successful we are with regards to developing our impact mitigation hierarchy and undertaking the risk analyses that build our strategy really depends on positive working relationships, both within our organization, but as importantly, or more importantly, with regulators, with local communities, as Rafael mentioned, with businesses, conservation organizations, academia, we lean very much on universities and other academic institutions in various regions because they bring a lot of research and development and innovation to our organization. And then finally, learning from our history. And so that's what I wanted to touch on in just a couple more slides. This slide is from around our Ontario operations in Sudbury, where we have five nickel mines, we have a nickel refinery, we have a smelter complex, um, all of which or many of which have been in existence for decades, um, close to a century. So what we have to undertake in that area is what we we're seeing here is biodiversity monitoring. So understanding the environment that surrounds us, um, what it looked like, as I said, before we got there, as we um, developed our operations and how we can help it recover from the impacts of our operations. Having been in operations for decades, environmental protections um, are much stronger now than they were, uh, say, 50 years ago. And so obviously the impacts are much less now than they were 50 years ago. And in some cases we're playing catch up with uh, trying to mitigate those impacts. So you can see here in the top left-hand corner, we um, breed fish. We have a small aquarium where we breed fish. And in the lower left-hand corner, we release those into the lakes and rivers that surround our operations. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see um, meadows and wildflowers and in the bottom middle those are bees so we have uh, beekeeping on our property uh, in order to encourage the biodiversity and and the pollination of wildflowers in the area and finally we have a greenhouse as well in our Sudbury region that supports our reforestation activities both inside and outside of our operational boundaries and this gives you an idea of where we were um, 40 years ago versus where we were even 10 years ago. And it's improving uh, year by year, decade by decade. So this was all contributed to not only from our biodiversity angle and, and being able to recognize what um, vegetation was native to the area before we undertook mining, but really the um, positive impact stemmed from environmental controls we put in place around air emissions, around water quality, and so it enabled um, the biodiversity to rebound with our assistance. Um, so you can see the drastic difference in, um, in the areas where we, uh, where we operate, all because we've invested billions of dollars, quite literally, in improving our environmental protection measures. And that was uh, what I had to share to start with. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks yeah. so much. Uh, it's very easy to, to see uh, the role of a mining company uh, on their sites and projects and, and connecting uh, biodiversity as one of the, the biggest issues at the agenda because you are using natural resources. So how to do it uh, in, a, in a more sustainable manner? Uh, thanks so much for your, for your initial thoughts. Uh, I now would like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Marcio Enriquez from, from uh, Market Intelligence Management at the BNDS. Please, Marcio, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to share with you my screen so we can see just a few slides. So um, I'm, I'm the manager of the market intelligence unit uh, here at BNDS that supports the department that is responsible with, for the relationship with the basic uh, materials uh, segment of the economy. So we, we deal with not only mining, but also 
uh, pulp and paper and chemicals and uh, all these, all of those sectors strongly uh, related to, to, to nature. So it's a big issue for us. We have to deal with those every day. So <clears throat> with that in mind, uh, I would like to present to you what BNDS has been doing uh, uh, about ESG and how it relates to its everyday activities. So just to let you know, uh, uh, BNDS has always been uh, 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 the state-owned bank uh, by the federal government. We support uh, uh, the activities of the economy that need some kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> um, leverage, some kind of aid to be to to reach higher levels of development. So. And for 40 years, we have we, we exist for 70 years. For 40 years, we have already uh, included in our everyday uh, um, activities the, the environmental and social concerns. So we were one of the first banks in the world, and especially in Brazil, that <clears throat> started to concern about uh, uh, environmental issues. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so we have been going through this path for quite a few time now but over some some recent years we have uh, uh, completely changed our core values and our mission statements so we could uh, definitely reflect that in our uh, uh, in our um, way of doing business so um, in 2017, we were the first bank in the Brazil to issue the, the, the some uh, a billion dollars in green bonds listed in the Luxembourg Green Exchange. Then we asked uh, Visual Iris to 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 run a, 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 a assessment of our of our ESG um, <clears throat> role, and we were um, qualified as one of the two best percent of the of the world's most sustainable institutions. We are committed to aligning our work with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. What you can see in the right left corner, in the right corner of your screen, is an interactive map, which is available in our website, where you can uh, select each one of the goals, and that shows in each of the states of, of Brazil how that goal is 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 being developed and how BNDS has supported that 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 goal. And finally, in 2021, BNDS made public its sustainability goals and commitments, which made clear to the society that we were definitely uh, uh, going to, to, to bring into our, into our everyday uh, uh, activities the, the concepts of ESG. So what does it mean in terms of, of financing? So we have different uh, ways of supporting companies that wish to, to, to uh, uh, have uh, a stronger uh, <clears throat> ESG impact in their activities. So uh, never mind the names, each name here is the name of one of our products. Just concentrate on what the, the, the products want to achieve. So we have a fund that it's a, a, a subsidized program of the Ministry of Environment to fund projects to to contribute to, that contribute to climate change mitigation uh, we have a specific line at market rates not subsidized this time to finance to, to finance environmental related investments we have a linkage low and uh, product that offers lower rates to those clients that meet negotiated sustainability requirements and we also have a revolving line of credit to finance the acquisition trade and production of equipments especially those with low carbon emissions so just to to point to you that uh, we have completely changed our portfolio of products over the years to to address such uh, a needed uh, transformation in our in our society but does that mean that BNDS will be able to 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 um, to solve the, all the problems of all the sectors it, it it gives credit to? Does all the sectors need credit? And and especially when we talk about mining, do we expect BNDS to be the the main solution for the mining segment uh, to to when it comes to funding? So we asked ourselves 
those questions and uh, the, 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 the answer was no, the NDS is not going to be the, the whole answer for the problem. So we, along with some partners and uh, Secretary Pedro is here and was a big part of that, we uh, <clears throat> imagined that we could uh, put together a network of, of entities that should be concerned of how to finance and how to uh, uh, finance sustainable mining and how to, to be, uh, how to have one forum, one place where all the companies uh, in the Brazilian market that need funding, that need to find some way of, of putting their, their business back up. Where could they go so they could find the, the right answer, the right uh, uh, um, uh, solution? So we created this, this hub that it's called Invest Mining. It's a website. It's, uh, we, we are a group that uh, uh, we meet uh, from time to time. And we have several actions in the pipeline. And all of them are concerned with financing the mining industry and financing only sustainable mining. So that means that, OK, we, we can sit together and, and think of a solution, but we have only uh, solutions to offer to those that take into consideration sustainable uh, 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 way of doing business. Uh, and then we can uh, uh, give you some examples of, of how BNDS has been acting. Not, uh, not these examples are not all related to, to, to mining. They are uh, in several uh, uh, <clears throat> sectors. But what you can see from this is that we have uh, ESG as a main driver to our activities today. So any uh, funding, any finance, any solution, uh, related to credit that we can find to, to, to mining companies will take into consideration the sustainability. So a few examples, we have put uh, 250 million reais in non-refundable resources to in a match funding uh, initiative called, called Floresta Viva, uh, where we expect other uh, private uh, actors to, to put together the, the other 250 million reais to create uh, ways of restore Brazilian biomes. So create the ecological corridors and recover hydrographic basins. Uh, we have structured the, the concession of Iguazu National Park. It's a 30 year concession and the park will have uh, 500 million reais in invested in biodiversity conservation, park infrastructure and urban, urban development. We have also created some uh, high impact investment funds where we want to call other actors in the market. BNDS will subscribe some quota in the equity funds, but we also want some, some other players to invest in companies that offer innovative solutions in health, education, renewable energies, sustainable agriculture and financial enclosure, inclusion. And also BNDS has teamed up with International Fund for Agricultural Development and the Green Climate Fund to improve food security and climate resilience, we have put together 200 million reais to support rural communities. So with these examples in mind, uh, we can expect any further uh, 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 action taken by BNDS in any sector, in any uh, uh, form of, of support that we can give to the Brazilian economy to take into consideration such uh, um, important uh, concepts as uh, environmental, social, and governance. So uh, this is, uh, in a nutshell, the, the 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 message that we brought here today. We hope we can uh, contribute to the discussion further on on the panel, and uh, we we make ourselves available to any any questions you have in the end. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marcio, for your uh, presentation and the integration of. Uh, finance into uh, biodiversity uh, it's extremely relevant and when we are talking about mining uh, and, and finance and insurance uh, becomes a critical role so uh, banks have a, a, an amazing role to play to push for win-win uh, uh, outcomes uh, uh, when when we need to to integrate biodiversity and, and business. Uh, 
thanks, Marcio. Uh, I'll now invite Mr. Leandro Uda, Business Development Lead, Coder Brazil, for, for your initial thoughts. Please, Leandro. Thanks, Rodrigo. And I'm gonna share my, my screen. Okay, first of all, thank you, Rodrigo and Rafael, for this opportunity to talk about biodiversity in this panel. It's, a, it's an honor, a pleasure. I'm Leandro Arruda from WSP Gouda. I'm based in Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais, in the Iro Quadrangle, with a, a lot of mines here in, in our region. I'm ecologist, a master's in plant biology, MBA, and the business development lead and the environmental group lead at, at WSP. Go to Brazil. So I am totally connected with this discipline. Uh, well, the, the environmental degradation and biodiversity loss are big challenges globally, and we believe it's time to urgently address this issue. And it's not just us, uh, WSP, lenders, financial markets, governments, and Corporations, all of them recognize this, this urgency. And considering that biodiversity is an essential aspect to the mine sector, uh, the question would be, or the question is, how biodiversity can be addressed in a structured way by mine companies, correct? So on the last decades, we are working with mine companies here in Brazil, in Canada, globally, through strategic assessments, permitting process, mine closure, developing mine closure plans, doing future, future use studies, and restoration projects. The main objectives of this, the, these works are preserve and restore biodiversity. So our agenda in this, in this presentation that we prepared for our panel, uh, we have three main, three main topics. The first one is about risks and impacts. Uh, in identifi identification process. We're gonna talk a little bit about mitigation hierarchy, critical habitats, and then we go to landscape ecology and restoration ecology. Okay, so um, I selected I selected this conceptual model to talk about our work related to risks and impacts, uh, identification process, process assessment. Uh, and we use this, this, this model in some projects here in Brazil. So the idea is to uh, start with the, the project alternatives, design alternatives. So we have to work together with the engineering uh, team, our client engineering team, to thinking about the, the footprint, alternatives to change the design, and I avoid biodiversity impacts. We also develop a comprehensive baseline study to in order to identify biodiversity values, so EBAs, IBAs. Uh, areas used by migratory species, critical habitats, ecosystem services, and these biodiversity values are very common here in Brazil. And then we conduct the, the, the impact assessment focusing in these biodiversity values. Uh, after this, this impact assessment, we prepare the uh, many, many actions, uh, management plans, monitoring, uh, establish some areas to be protected, 
uh, restoration actions, and we uh, put this together in a, in a biodiversity action plan. Uh, if you have, we have residual impacts, we can uh, study biodiversity offsets in order to uh, achieve no net loss or net gain. Uh, and we also consider the Brazilian regulations, international best practice, and the academic expert input. So it's our, our framework to develop our, our studies here in Brazil and Can in Canada, also in Africa, Europe, it's, it's similar. We have a lot of a lot of material documents uh, about this, this this approach, this methodology, and the mitigation hierarchy, uh, uh, and it's not some some concepts here like critical habitats, ecosystem service are not common in Brazil. So the environmental agencies. Uh, uh, don't request this this kind of approach, but uh, we are using and IBAMA, the federal agency in Brazil, the state agencies, they receive this, this kind of information and analysis very well. So that's the framework. And going to the next slide, I insert some, some examples of critical habitats. And in Brazil, most of the pro projects that, that we develop, environmental impact assessments uh, for many companies, we, we, we find endangered species, endangered species, uh, ecosystems with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of endangered species or endangered. So critical habitats is, are, are very common in Brazil. And uh, we also have the hotspots, so the Atlantic rainforest, the Cerrado, né, our, the Brazilian savanna. So we have the, the knowledge, the, the methodologies, the, the, the framework to, to, to prepare a good, uh, a comprehensive baseline to evaluate the impacts. But the challenge is to get to to get actions uh, on on the <clears throat> uh, get actions on the ground. So that's our 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 challenge as consultancy companies, as a consultancy company. So I selected this example. Uh, we developed this work in, in the Amazon region. It, uh, was, it was for a potash mine. So we, we developed the baseline study and uh, together with the engineering company, we selected uh, impacted areas uh, to to, to install the facilities. So the, the first objective was avoid. Let's avoid the, the forest. Let's avoid the aquatic resource. And the, the, the beginning was very good. And, and then with this landscape ecology, this landscape analysis that we developed with, with modeling, et cetera, we, we could understand the functional connectivity. connectivity. We could uh, define the conservation and restoration priorities. We support our client in terms of land acquisition. And then we could uh, establish a landscape level conservation. So it was very interesting, the, the environmental agents really appreciated the work uh, and now this company is, is getting close to the construction phase uh, where we can, we can find a lot of challenges but but it was a, a very interesting example uh, using this kind of 
of approach of analysis related to landscape ecology. Another, another discipline that I select to this presentation uh, is restoration ecology. Uh, these photos uh, here are about the disaster of Fundão Tailings Dam. So, as you can see, we develop a lot of uh, work regarding river engineering, bioengineering, terrestrial and aquatic ecology. And we are developing this, this work since 2016. So, it, it's a great challenge, but you can see that the results, the results at this moment in the, the photo. Uh, comparing with the original, not the original scenario. In, the, in this first photo here, we can, we, 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 our engineering team has already uh, developed some, some actions. Uh, and uh, in our, our team here in Brazil uh, has a lot of, a lot of projects uh, related to restoration ecology, uh, developing our mine closure plans, future use. We count on our hydrology and hydrogeology teams, connect, connecting with nature-based solutions. So the restoration ecology, that, that is the, the, the third step in the mitigation hierarchy, is pretty interesting for us in a, in a, a good, a good uh, option to achieve the no net loss and the net gain uh, during, the, during the, the life of cycle of a, of a mine project. Uh, so in summary, uh, I believe we have to improve the, the application of mitigation hierarchy to achieve greater benefits to biodiversity. But part of this is implement the framework to identify the risks, but the big challenge is, is the implementation. We need to get the actions on the ground, as I said, and start demonstrating uh, the no net loss or net gain. In Brazil, I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that in terms of no net loss or net gain, and the complete process, but it's urgent. And I believe the mine sector can lead this, this initi initiative, this transformation. So I believe this is the, my message uh, for, for us, for, for the mine sector. I believe in, in, in this capacity. And, and that's all. Thank you very much again. Um, I, thanks so much, uh, Leandro. You, Rodrigo. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, you you brought uh, very interesting thoughts about how to the importance of defining risks and and defining risk mitigation strategies to to be able to avoid risks and when you have a a damage to to tackle this and as as uh the last uh effort uh in in, in doing mining so uh thanks so much for, for your presentation i would now like to to invite mr uh marcio pereira partner at B, bma law uh to bring your 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 initial views please marcio you have the floor thank you rodrigo are you hearing me? It's fine? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, fine. Okay. okay. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure uh, to share my view about the biodiversity uh, in legal perspective to add some uh, legal uh, approach related to ESG and the link with financial sector as well. So I will try to share my presentation here. Just a minute, please. So, 
uh, I will bring some view about uh, uh, four points uh, related to uh, concerning about legal aspects involving biodiversity in mining projects in Brazil. Uh, bring some regulatory review, uh, two leading cases uh, in uh, Supreme Court in Brazil, High Court. Uh, some practice view about about the undertaking biodiversity policy uh, in mining projects. Uh, and one example uh, related to mining project in legal Amazon wire and the problems uh, uh, I have been um, taking in my career like in, here in Brazil. Um, I have been working with mining project in Brazil at least 20 years, uh, mainly in, in Amazon area. So um, uh, there are, uh, I have, um, uh, I believe, um, a legal view about the, uh, how to deal with the, uh, the bio biodiversity uh, uh, aspects related to the projects. So I will try to bring some, um, uh, to share with you part of this uh, experience, okay? So um, related to Brazil regulatory overview, um, uh, I'm sorry, I just, yes, okay. Uh, there are many different laws in Brazil related to biodiversity, forest code, rainforest, and natural conservation sites, caves, water, wildlife, genetic resources. Uh, in general, uh, the legislation aims to control agents uh, that may cause environmental impact, such as biodiversity loss. It, it uh, established the rules and the conditions for production process in their various aspects, including intervention uh, in protected areas, forest preservation, use of natural resources and land use, and, and among others. Uh, for instance, um, uh, the code, uh, the forest code, uh, established rules for vegetation removal and the prior authorization, as well as uh, creates a protected areas. Uh, you, um, uh, in, by premise, you cannot access to to, um, to mine. Okay, um, and the Atlantic Forest Law, it's another example, uh, also provides specific roles uh, on intervention and the removal of, of vegetation located in the Mata Atlantica. It's a, a uh, specific biome in Brazil, uh, which particular stands for mining projects, uh, mainly uh, uh, offsetting measures. Okay. Um, uh, just to highlight two uh, uh, important um, uh, laws in Brazil related to the, the forest, uh, the Atlantic forest, um, both of them uh, are very important to protect the biodiversity. And the, um, uh, they uh, bring specific rules for mining projects. Um, of course, uh, those legislation drive an environmental assessment required during the, uh, the environment permitting. Uh, for instance, my, mining activities um, uh, require an environment impact assessment and report, which must address the potential environmental impact on biodiversity and propose preventive and control measures uh, to reduce uh, this kind of impact. In addition, uh, some um, compensate measure as well. Um, uh, it brings uh, some light about the feasibility of the project uh, uh, in the uh, in the phase uh, the company is planning about the uh, goal or no goal uh, the project. Uh, also, the mining uh, industry biodiversity conserv conservation performance is under increased uh, scrutiny from uh, society uh, and the market, uh, financial market. Uh, this is the 
in part to a growing uh, awareness of the importance of biodiversity uh, conservation, but also because the industry often operates in remote and in the environmental sensitive areas, as uh, my colleagues uh, men mentioned before. Uh, 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 so, um, comply with the environmental law is the first step, it's the baseline to address the ESG criteria and to assess uh, finance. Uh, so it says, it says it's, uh, just the, the baseline, you have to keep it in mind to understand uh, uh, this kind of process uh, uh, to deal with the, in, the ESG criteria. So, um, however, uh, in this context, um, there is a concern whether a uh, mining project which affects a biodiversity protection area could be considered non-conform uh, with the environmental law due to that analysis involve many aspects of land and natural resource use and requiring a complex offset measures. Um, in Brazil, uh, in regard to this um, concern, there are two important cases that address uh, the legal case that address the main legal concerns and gave uh, legal certainty to investors. Both of them, uh, uh, they are uh, in this uh, on this slide. Uh, the first one uh, uh, was uh, tried in 25, and the other one 28. Um, they are very important uh, to talk about the, the mining in biodiversity because uh, the, the, um, they started uh, related to a conflict between the mining projects and the, the, um, uh, the protected areas related to biodiversity. And in the discussion in both of them, uh, it was related the, the power to state to regulate the situation. Uh, the, in the first one, the case is uh, if it's possible to mine uh, to be undertake, uh, undertake uh, uh, into the environmental uh, uh, protected areas. Uh, uh, and the uh, Supreme Court decided yes, it's possible. Uh, since you have the uh, appropriate environmental control and measures uh, to preserve the natural attributes of the, the, this site. And then another uh, 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 trial is related to uh, 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 the power to state, uh, the, the state power to regulate uh, the environmental offset uh, to face the, the, the impact it has. Uh, no, um, the impact you cannot co control, you cannot avoid, you cannot mitigate, you have to compensate, so you have an environmental offsetting. Both of them um, drive uh, this uh, uh, decision from the Supreme Court, drive uh, in general view, the way the state um, uh, exercise the power to regulate uh, the mining and uh, the, uh, the environmental control related to uh, biodiversity loss and, and the impact on biodiversity areas. They are very important to, uh, to, to understand the problem in Brazil related to this kind of conflict. Uh, based on this, uh, I can say uh, there is room for the Brazilian state to regulate the interface in areas of biodiversity and the control measures, including compensatory for mining, uh, mining projects. Uh, for, uh, to bring some example, uh, uh, after this decision, what the uh, regulatory improved. Let's stop the share. Yes, you stop. Yeah, yeah Mars. Yes, just a minute, please. Now? It's okay now? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm sorry for that. So, uh, 
uh, uh, I was saying uh, Brazil uh, after this uh, kind of decision, uh, if the, uh, there was uh, before there was a view uh, could be uh, uh, difficult to mine in some areas in Brazil. So after that, uh, after the based on the, the uh, Supreme uh, High Court in Brazil, um, uh, there is a, a, a legal certainty about the, the possibility, but the problem is how to do that, how to face the, the biodiversity impact in, in CCTV areas. So uh, to bring some example about the, the improvement of regulation in Brazil, uh, and federal agency uh, related to manage of the the national forest in the uh, conservation areas uh, it, uh, it, it has been using a print uh, plan de redução de impacto à biodiversidade or biodiversity impact reduction plan as a tool to access assess impacts on biodiversity in federal protected areas related to mining projects uh, to uh, evaluate if you have to avoid or minimize or restore some areas and to uh, to choose a offset so it's a, a kind of uh, a kind of regulatory uh, tool uh, uh, address similar points related to the the, uh, the biodiversity po policy uh, brings uh, uh, ICMM uh, uh, view uh, in mitigation hierarchy, as uh, my colleague from Golder said a, a little bit about this uh, tool. Uh, it's a methodological view to how to, to face this kind of um, situation in Brazil uh, is, is kind of the uh, the measure how to apply the measure related to uh, to, to control uh, uh, environment impact on biodiversity so uh, it, um, it's uh, it's a bracket part practice. It's important to look at the cross sector guide uh, it was launched 2015, uh, built with the participation of ICMM, as I said, which offers a good view of how to deal with the biodiversity component, uh, with the objective of reducing impact or even providing the opportunity to bring gains. Uh, uh, and it's very clear for us if you avoid uh, impacts, you uh, reduce in potential, uh, if you reduce uh, the potential impacts, uh, you you have some positive aspects uh, uh, in, ter in terms of stakeholders' trust. Um, you can uh, establish more clear about the cost and reduce the liabilities. If you cannot avoid or you uh, minimize or restore or uh, choose offset uh, measure, increase the stakeholders' trust. Um, um, uncertainty cost increase as well, liabilities risk increases as, as well. In Brazil, there are many uh, uh, legal difficulties related to offset, uh, to how to implement it, uh, to, how to undertake, undertake. sometimes it's, it's a challenge in, in, under the, the court, um, but it's involving uh, stakeholders, uh, uh, some conflicts uh, and land use. It could be uh, sometimes uh, the only uh, uh, um, way to deal with the, the impact, but uh, uh, everyone knows it's uh, it brings many uh, legal uh, aspects involved to undertake this kind of solution. Um, so uh, um, the last point is about uh, one is example about the mining project in legal Amazon area. Um, this uh, project, uh, it was a, a expansion of the project. Uh, the environment impact assessment was refused um, uh, because no mine them are recovered. Um, uh, and the proposal of the environment impact assessment uh, failed to 
to show how to deal with the uh, the recovery, the area recovery, uh, and, and to improve the uh, uh, the biodiversity uh, measures. Um, so uh, uh, after some uh, negotiation involve uh, legal aspects, uh, uh, the comp company. Uh, change the, the the mindset, the way to uh, to see the, the project and establish some mining free uh, areas, uh, improve the restoration and reduce the uh, the footprint uh, was reduction reduced as well. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the environmental impact assessment um, uh, 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 has been uh, developed in, in different way uh, uh, nowadays. Um, so uh, uh, this show how the more proactive attitude in terms of environment strategy uh, going far beyond compliance with legal requirements if, uh, if the objective uh, to reduce the complex footprint by restoring mining sites and avoid the use of rehabilitated areas engage, of course, the traditional uh, local community uh, and avoid conflicts over land use. In this case, uh, um, it's happening a, a lot. Uh, to sometimes bring some net gain uh, in, in this situation to improve the, the upsides uh, um, uh, uh, for the project to involve uh, community uh, and some game. Uh, I believe this uh, involves a lot of reputation uh, uh, to establish, uh, uh, to like a link to license to operate. In, in, uh, it's an old expression, I prefer ESG view, but it's, uh, it's an intangible uh, but in significant benefit to the business. And it can uh, uh, influence the the, pers the uh, the stakeholder the perception about the, the, the project and the, to uh, how to address uh, the, the impact. Yeah? Uh, and to assess uh, capital, particularly where project finance is to be obtained from uh, uh, one of the investment banks that are, uh, uh, are involved in two equatorial principles, which apply the biodiversity performance standards, uh, of international finance cooperation to all investments uh, in excess ten b million dollars. So it's very important uh, in, in this um, uh, financing perspective to comply with the the agreement between uh, with the uh, the the investment banks to access to, to cap capital. So. Um, just to uh, finalize, uh, the main uh, uh, idea here is to say um, the, the, the law is, uh, provides some uh, legal certainty. It's the baseline, but now to, uh, uh, to operate in, in biodiversity areas, to, uh, you, you need to go uh, far beyond compliance with legal requirements. Uh, to promote some strategies related to benchmark of the sector mining, involve some tools like uh, hierarchy uh, uh, mitigation uh, in order to increase the investor confidence and the loyalty, uh, to, uh, to improve community relations, a, a strong support partnership with the uh, the government and, and the uh, yeah, environmental agency or mining agents. Uh, so uh, in, involve different stakeholders in our project. So this is, I, mean, I believe, the ESG insight. So thank you for attention. Thanks so much, Marcio. Uh, you you highlighted. Uh, very important cases in Brazil and, and challenges when it comes to the regulatory perspective of mining and and to to really to mining and on in a sustainable manner. Uh, uh, assuming that we are uh, three minutes past five o'clock, I would take the opportunity to ask you a very uh, 
one minute answer to to one question. Uh, uh, Marshall, if you just please can can uh, not share any more your screen. Okay. Because uh, I, I would be able to see everyone. Just a uh, minute. Don't worry. Uh, so I, I would uh, ask uh, all of the panelists and, and starting with Laurie about what is her view, uh, quick view on how to integrate business and finance to support sustainable use of biodiversity? Yeah, I would suggest that, uh, first of all, we have to make it so that it's not a biodiversity strategy, so that biodiversity is part of our business strategy um, and enable our leadership, our senior leaders, to make informed decisions about the projects we're undertaking, the investments we're making, and as importantly, the investments we're not making. So those investments that get cut at budget time that um, are not revenue generators, but that are protective of our assets and um, our programs in the longer term. A uh, program we've recently introduced is risk-based closure planning. And that's where we get together many um, cross-functional representatives from across the organization and at each site to really go through in detail the risks associated with our closure plans and um, everything from community investment through to biodiversity management, water quality, tailings management. Um, and that really helps to inform the decision too and make all of those considerations part of our broader strategy and our decision-making processes. Thanks, Laurie. Very mm -hmm. stick to the point uh, view on, on how, what every, every one of us must consider when we're dealing with this. Uh, kind of kinds of projects. Thanks, Laurie. So uh, now, please, uh, Mr. Uh, Marshall and uh, your initial, your, your final thoughts about this: how to integrate business and finance to promote sustainable use of biodiversity in mining, of course. Yes, I think we are, uh, especially here in Brazil, we are going through a, a very uh, peculiar time where um, we are. We are witnessing a change in the mindset of the of the uh, of the of investors and of the companies. So uh, that will will make possible for companies to to internalize some some concepts that over the years were some somehow put aside. And once they they start uh, uh, facing their their business not only as uh, um, with a with a tangible and a physical uh, uh, um, uh, outcome, but also with a <clears throat> intangible outcome related to nature services, related to <clears throat> environmental benefits, they will start, I think, uh, preparing their business plans and, and their pitches and, 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 uh, uh, and start approaching banks and funds and all of those as uh, uh, um, as uh, uh, as partners uh, equally responsible for 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 uh, conducting business in a more uh, sustainable and responsible way and it will make it easier for banks and for fund and for investment funds and and all of those uh, financial actors to to support and not be uh, and take into their models uh, level <coughs> Sorry, a level of risk that sometimes made it impossible for for them to support those kind of business. As long as those variables are put into the business model, and 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 taken into consideration and mitigated and and seen as as something that has to be dealt with, the 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 the, the we, we are going to see the real business plans and the real projects with all their 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 uh, um, uh, I mean with all their their possible outcomes and that will make it a, a more bankable and more more uh, uh, um, palatable for 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 those uh, that wish to finance such projects thanks so much marcio now uh, I, I would invite mr uh, leandro please for your final views 
Rodrigo, uh, I believe that biodiversity is the, the second wave in terms of SG, ESG, so climate change, the first one, and biodiversity for me is the PNF, PNFB is developing the, the framework, the, the targets, etc. for for companies and we have next year the the COP of biodiversity. I guess right now there isn't any any city defined, I believe. It was in China, but I believe they changed. So COP from one next year, PNFD will finish the the work in next year at the same time. And I believe we're gonna face a lot of changes in this market in, in the, the mine sector. Uh, future, future use for closed mines is, is, is a, an excellent opportunity and define, define working with urban planning and, and nature-based solutions, it's excellent to develop this kind of uh, connections with, with communities, of course, and uh, urban or traditional communities. Uh, we have a lot of experience with traditional communities in Brazil. I believe the secretary mentioned the Copaiba management plan uh, in I guess it's, it's in a site in the Amazon region where we work and we are developing this kind of management plan for uh, Pirarucu, the, the biggest fish in the Amazon. Man, management plan for the turtles, the, the, the Copaiba tree, etc. So, uh, and we have to include in our studies in Brazil, uh, the approach of critical habitats, ecosystem services, uh, uh, economic evaluation, uh, so natural capital. So that's the, for me, that's the idea to, to improve and to accelerate the, the biodiversity conservation. With the, the, the third sector as well, ONGs, ONGs, so thanks for the... Hey, thanks so much, Leandro. Uh, I see that Laurie have another meeting at, at 5.15. Uh, Laurie, please feel free to, to leave us. Thanks so much for your participation. And, and now we, uh, I'll, I'll kindly ask Marcio Pereira for your final thoughts. I believe, uh, Rodrigo, um, the regulator uh, has a, a important uh, play to to help to to engage uh, mining companies uh, in the finance sector in biodiversity uh, targets, uh, biodiversity uh, uh, planning. Uh, I believe. Um, uh, there is a good example in Europe. Um, uh, Rafael knows uh, about that, the new regulation about the uh, uh, way to control the environment aspects in the chain. So uh, this is an uh, important uh, fact, uh, important legal aspect. If you bring uh, some uh, uh, common liability, uh, joint liability between the, the uh, companies involved in the same chain, related to a specific issue like a biodiversity uh, to share to join in liability is a way to um, how okay, to share um, the cost involved uh, 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 the environment impact in the the biodiversity and uh, I believe it's uh, could be a, a way to to deal with this this kind of situation and to improve uh, uh, the, the way to control and the way to uh, to see the SG aspects uh, relate uh, this kind of uh, situation uh, with relation the commercial relationship between the companies. Thank you.
Okay. Thanks so much, Marcio. So, dear uh, folks, uh, we we get to the end of our panel. Uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and thanks the, the panelists for for the the very inspiring contributions to this debate. That actually is at the core, uh, at 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 the core, at the center of the sustainable development agenda. I believe every one of us will hear a lot about biodiversity and the future, uh, the global biodiversity framework that will be agreed and how companies integrate or what companies should do to, to be uh, contain about what, what is at stake at this agenda that will certainly uh, lead the financial sector uh, as well. Uh, thanks uh, uh, from, from the invitation to be here, uh, Rafael. And, and, and now I just pass to Rafael for, for final remarks. Thank you, Rodrigo, for moderating this dance panel about, uh, about biodiversity. Thank, uh, thank you for you, you, all the, the panelists for, for your participation and contribution. Uh, I think uh, we, we have uh, a lot of material to, to think about. And uh, uh, on, on behalf of, of the Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce, We'd like to, to thank all sponsoring companies for the, the partnership, our platinum sponsors, Valley, uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, uh, Ciscom Barrier, Baker McKenzie, Sigma Lithium, and Forby Mining, our gold sponsors, Aerocopper, uh, Mineração Caraiba, Expert Development Canada, uh, Lipton Precious Metals, Equinox Gold, Yamana Gold, APN Capital, Brazil, and our silver sponsor, Brookfield, BMA Law, uh, London Mining, Jaguar Mining, Bemisa, Horizonte Minerals, Alvarez and Marçal, Promon Engenharia, and Kinross. So don't forget May 24th, our session on technology and innovation in the mining sector. Uh, on June 13th, 14th, we'll host our traditional in-person event during the 16th Brazil Canada Conference at uh, PDAC. And thank you all again for your presence here today. Uh, our partners, members, guests, staff, and volunteers for all of, all of your support. Uh, Mariana uh, and Khalil, special thanks to the, the staff of the BCCC. Obrigado. Merci. Thank you. And see you next time. <laughs>